Okay. We have a special guest. <laughs> it's the cat. There we go. Yep, this is Sam. She's um, not really our special guest, but here she is. <sighs> so, hey, I found the thing that says how many people are watching, so that's exciting. Yeah, so um, my purpose here today is that I just want to knit all the things or crochet all the things, and it's getting a little out of control. I've started, I don't know, many new projects in the last um, uh, week. I'm not kidding. Oh, there might be barking soon. And uh, I probably should really finish some old things before I start more new things, because I'm not going to not start new things, duh. Um, so I thought perhaps I would, um, you know, show you some things. I have a lot. I'm surrounded. It's a little depressing. It's a lot depressing, to be honest. Um, but I'm, uh, I thought I would just sort of do a show and tell. And, um, and then we can, we, um, if you want to tell me what to do, you start by going, you know what you should do? You should do this. And this doesn't count. Um, like I have some knitting for hire projects, which is never, don't ever do knitting for hire projects, but I do have knitting for hire projects and I have, um, at least one shop sample for woven art that I'm, you know, supposed to be working on. Um, and yet I just brought home another project's worth of yarn yesterday. Um, in addition to the one that I got uh, two weeks ago that I started. So, um, you know, it's it's a thing. I'm not the only one that has more than one project. I don't know how many I have. Last I counted, it was over 40. So we'll see how many we have. Um, oh, there you are. I had to roll up. Hi, Jean. How are you? Hi, Lisa. Um, yeah, I'm going to do the hi, everybody. So... Yeah, I'm still figuring out. Oh, I see. So when I scroll, I can't see the numbers, but I can see the comments, whatever. Okay. So you ready? And then this will be um, on my website. You can watch it, not my website, um, Facebook page, and you can watch it later and weigh in because um, I'll probably not listen to anything anybody says. Anyway, but I do want to hear opinions. I did not say that out loud. I do need help. Okay. So what do you want to see first? I have, um, here's the closest thing. So my COVID skill, uh, my COVID skill is coping. My COVID thing that I uh, decided to learn is um, to get better at crochet because I work in a yarn shop and um, people ask questions and I sell crochet things and it would be nice if I knew what the hell um, they were. So next pandemic, we're gonna do weaving, just FYI, a little heads up there. But I decided, and I don't have the yarn anymore. I mean, I do. I have these cute little, okay, I won't take this long on all of them. This is Rowan um, Fine Lace. You like that with the bag? Pretty classy. Rowan Fine Lace. It's a lace weight. Um, I keep trying to get people to knit with lace weight. You'll see another one pop up. And um, I had never done a granny square. So, the, oh, look, I'm so color coordinated with, oops, <laughs> the artwork. But uh, this is just a giant granny square. Um, out of one, two, three, four colors of the Rowan Fine Lace or whatever I just held up. And um, I just kept going. And I decided this was going to be, huh, I decided that this was going to be my winter uh, scarf for 20, uh, well, for 2020, 2021. 2021, there's a slash in there. Wow. Um, so I was just going to keep going until I ran out of yarn. And it's this big, which is probably big enough to wear under my coat, but I don't have a border on it yet. So the reason it's here, and plus, you know, let's be honest, it's the ends aren't woven in, still makes a scarf. So my idea was to mix um, in some knitting by putting a little tiny I-cord edge on here, which I still want to do. Um, but I'd have to think about it. So this is this is the first one. It just needs to have the ends woven in and it needs to have my, um, I like that it's sort of reversible too. So um, yeah, so it sort of needs to have the border put on and the ends woven in. Thank you for saying you have 40 plus projects. Oh yeah, well, we'll see. So I thought about um, taking notes and then I thought, well, I did this and then I thought, no, I'll just watch it afterwards and make a list of all the things I show you and then I can figure out how many I have. If anybody wants to count, go for it. So there's a crochet project. Um, 
What's this? This is, I'm just, I don't have any rhyme or reason. This is a hat. If Anna shows up, hopefully that wasn't on anything. If Anna shows up here, um, she took a class from me on my um, cabled intarsia. So, sorry. Yeah, cabled intarsia in the round. So we did intarsia in the round. And this was the hat I made while she made her hat. And I have a, another one. This one's, whoops seems to be a part of the pattern that you have a DPN sticking out. So there's a finished one. And I have a very exciting um, purple pom-pom that I got from Lorna of um, Lorna uh, Zombie Yarns that I think I'm going to put on that one. Or maybe I could go on that one. So that's one thing that needs to be done. And then guess what? I haven't woven the ends in yet again. So that's just ends being woven in also. Um, yeah, I should have a pile for these. Just need to have the ends woven in. Hi, Anna. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, so I still haven't finished my hat. Anna wore her hat because she's better than I am. So, um, I mean, I could wear my hat. Who says I have to weave in the ends, right? Is this a thing? Oh my God, that's another thing. Okay, in this one, there's nothing in this one. That's yarn. We'll find the sweater later that goes in that bag. What's this one? This is exciting. Oh, okay. Mm. All right. So <laughs> this, um, if you've taken my Fair Isle class in the last few years, you will recognize this. But this is a skirt um, that I made using all stash yarn, 100%. Yep, 100% stash yarn. Yay, Anna says she gets lots of compliments on her hat. Um, 100% stash yarn. Stash yarn because I bought it to make a thing and then I decided not to make the thing so then it became stash yarn. Um, but it was well aged. It, it had been a few years. But this is a pattern by Michelle Hunter called, I think it's called Zigzagger and it was in a, a Stitches, no, a Knitter's Magazine back when I used to edit for Knitter's Magazine. And um, it's corrugated rib, which means um, Fair Isle. Ooh. It's knits and pearls done in, in colors and then it moves so you get the zigzag effect. I just need to um, fold that down and sew it and put the, somewhere there's elastic. So that, see, that's why I can't finish anything. Hi, Barb. Um, that's why I can't finish anything is I can't find the stuff. But somewhere there's black elastic, should be close by, but that's going in a pile. So that's skirt number one. And then my friend Gwen Bortner, some of you know Gwen, um, designed a skirt using leftovers. And um, yeah, uh, so I only bought three skeins of yarn <laughs> for this one. Um, and this one, my friend Marilyn actually knit for me. Whoops. And I'm very excited about wearing it. Um, so it's based on Gwen's she has two one's master that's masterpiece from leftovers or something and there's a sock weight one and a worsted weight one and this is the worsted weight version but but altered to fit me um we can talk about skirts that's the other thing is if you have a class idea i need to put classes on my schedule so let me know what you want to learn um, but this is actually gorgeous it's three different colors of yarn and it's a um i forget what the stitch is i always forget i think it's a seed stitch broken seed stitch. It's broken seed stitch. So um, the colors get a lot of play. So there's a purpley Ma Malabrigo Rios in there. And there's a spun right round gray with some flecks of pink and blue. And, um, and then a bunch of <laughs> leftovers. I had all this gray yarn and I didn't know what I wanted to make with gray yarn. So I tied it all together. There's a bag of it over there. And um, so the third yarn is the gray yarns all tied together. So you can see all the little ties. They're all in there. All little knots. It's pretty on the inside. Look. Oh, so this one um, is completely done. I think she said there's, yep, one tail to weave in here. Whoop. After I put, guess what? Um, I'm not this wide. Really? Although I've been eating a lot of cookies. I'm going to sneeze. So this is... Um, Yes, I can get more black elastic, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you. I also know where I could buy it, probably right next to Woven Art. Um, but I need to put the elastic in and then sew that up. So that's the same. And then I'll have two beautiful skirts to wear with my beautiful boots in the winter. And then I also pulled up, this is a skirt I made a million years ago. Not quite. 
um, from a pattern in Interweave Knits by, I don't remember who, and I, uh, Indigo Ripples? Why does that sound familiar? Some skirt um, by some person, but it was an inter, Interweave Knits. And it's got, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a purple, duh, like a black purple um, Elsabeth leveled silk and wool. And um, it has, are they I cord? I think teeny tiny I cord ties. So this, I was being brilliant and uh, made it longer since I'm taller. And um, I don't know if you can see this bulge that's right by my cheek right now. So there was shaping for the hip, but I made it longer and I made it longer. I either did more increases for the hip or I made it straighter before the increases. I don't know, but the hips are now too big and in the wrong place. And I've since edited a book on making skirts that fit by Candace Eisner Strick called Knit My Skirt, um, published by XRX. And so I want to alter it. I just want to whack and re-put it back, to, re -put it back together. Um, so it's a finished skirt that I'm going to unknit part of, I'm going to chop it and take out a section and put it back together because what I was going to tear it out, but why? It's a beautiful skirt. So there's three skirts in my collection of things to finish. Here's a swatch for the one. Um, I think that's all the skirts I have. Oh, and then let's see what's in here. Oh, that was the skirt. Oh, guess what? Black elastic. I found the bag. It was in the bag. Yep. Not the brightest bulb. Okay. Um, yeah, let's see what's in this one. So many bags. It's kind of like Christmas, except ugh, I don't really want any of the gifts. Um, okay. I was thinking this would be either a good class or a good um, Facebook Live thing. I have, I have this, um, oh, yeah. Ooh, I bet they're over here. Yeah, so I have this problem where I wear a lot of socks, all hand knit, and then eventually, Oh, Barb, you would rock a knitted skirt. Everybody can wear a knitted skirt. Um, you just have to make it bigger than your hips or so it doesn't look too small. Okay. Hmm. So this isn't the one that, oh yeah, it is. So there's, I get holes in my socks for various reasons. And I hate, hate, I do not like, I much dislike darning socks. Plus I learned from Jessie Gregg's Visible Mending class before she had her store seams next to Woven Art that um, while well, visible mending is awesome, the part that's worn out is just as old as the parts that haven't yet worn out, but are also going to wear out. Um, so with that as my, look, it's like a little handle for my sock. With that in mind, what I like to do is, um, oh, there have to be some, is cut off the foot and knit a new, like right here, and then just knit a new foot with some yarn because we all have leftover bits of um, sock yarn. And I had a bunch of um, solids. So somewhere here in this pile, I bet we're gonna find some um, feet to sew, to weave the ends in on, um, but this one needs to have the foot cut off. So I thought that would be a fun thing to do for either a class, like how to darn socks by just re-knitting the feet, cutting them off. Because it's really empowering to know, oh god, there's another one. To know how to um, cut things, for one thing. Um, so with that in mind, this is a pair of red gloves that I've um, repaired by just re-knitting the um, fingers or the thumb a gazillion times. And I gave up, I'm giving up, because they are made out of... Um, yeah, Lisa, support group for mending socks, except I don't really mend. I re-knit the feet. Um, but you know, I can, I can. if you want to mend, you go right ahead. I want a darning egg. I don't, I would never use a darning egg, but I want one. Um, so maybe I don't have to actually use it. This is a blend of, no, yeah. It's either a blend of wool and alpaca or it's just alpaca, but it's mostly alpaca, I think. And um, so it's too soft really to be usable mittens that get a lot of wear. They're not mittens, they're gloves. So what I thought I'd do, guess what, is chop it off here and here and make fingerless mitts. Or even here and make, you know, fingerless mitts. There's gotta be a different name for that. So there's one pair. Um, I also have mittens that my friend Abby knit for me that, 
um, also keep wearing out, and I have repaired them a million times. Oh, yep. There. Um, I have more of the yarn, but I'm getting really tired of mending them, so I thought these would be a lovely candidate to be um, mitts as well. So that's a pile. And then I did, oh, guess what? Then just because, sorry, there's a fuzzy in my mouth. I don't know where it came from. Just because I thought, um, why not just knit the pair from scratch? So I have new fingerless mitts, but guess what? I need to weave the ends in. So do these go in the end weaving pile or with the other mitts? They go in the end weaving pile. I don't really have an end weaving pile. Okay, but those go in there, and I'm gonna put those on top of the socks. There's a lot of socks. So that does that count as one project or 70 that I have to knit new feet on? Maybe not 70. Lots, lots though. And I bet in here I'll find the socks. Uh, let's see. Hi, Stephanie. <laughs> um, yeah, Stephanie says she tried to mend a sweater and found that she stinks at it. Um, and she hates it. So there's that. Yeah. So um, my friend Naomi just um, repaired her son's um, teddy bear by sewing a piece of fabric on the inside. And it's um, superhero fabric. I think it says, bam. Hi, Debbie. Aw. <sighs> I haven't seen Debbie in forever. And she's way over there on the West Coast. Okay. Um, oh, look. So this is what I'm talking about. I would cut off the foot and knit a new foot. And this is here because I need to weave, weave in the ends. Obviously I have an issue. And then here's another pair. Yep, another pair. And another pair. <laughs> I'm gonna have a lot of socks one of these days, again. Okay, so those go in the sock pile. Or the weaving and end pile. This is a scarf. Getting tired of the, um, you know, projects yet. This I made out of yarn. Um, okay, I started this on my 55th birthday. Okay, yeah, just think about that. It was five years ago, F almost five years ago. So it's two silks. Um, this is a sport weight <sighs> silk, like a bra silk, you know, it's not the shiny kind. And then this is the nubbly um, shiny kind, also silk. And they're both from a company called The Loom, and this one's called Spec, and this one's called Rissoni, I think, and it's a lace weight. And I had the idea of um, casting on 55 stitches and doing just a simple intarsia, um, that's one line of intarsia scarf, so that I would have an intarsia project, that's pretty long because I had a lot of yarn, to, so, to show my um, students. So guess what? I just need to weave in the ends. There's like four or six. So there's that project. And then this is sparkly. I'm just all over the place. This is a sparkly shawl. It's crocheted. And look, see the end? Just needs to have a couple ends woven in. Yep. Sparkly. It has a nice drape to it too. Um, yeah, Elizabeth, uh, yeah, she says, I need to make myself finished garments before I start anything new. Yeah, it's not happening here in this house. I already started two new things in the last week. Um, and she has start starditis and have the attention of a dog seeing a squirrel. Yes, so do I. That's why I started two projects in the last week. Um, so yeah, there's those. And, you know, we're going to be honest. This is a little, if you've taken my um, entrelot class, there's little swatches, um, and I always thought I would take the two swatches, and then I knit a little, um, that's a triangle, and I would sew them together and make a little bag. And I put a, a, like, I got as far as putting a buttonhole in there, and I have buttons picked out, and it lives in a little Ziploc bag, and that, that should become a little bag at some point. Oh, this is an oldie but a goodie. So a long time ago, in a land far away, I bought a whole lot of purple um, koi goo. And um, 
you know, the K-P-P-P-P-P-M or whatever. Um, and I also had black koi goo, sort of solid. And I knit a sweat. A... It was going to be a sweater from, I don't remember the designer. And it was mitered squares. It was a knit picks. It was free on knit picks, but it was, it's a designer that I'd heard of from way back. And um, it's mitered squares. Did I mention that? So I did a swatch or did I do a swatch? I probably didn't do a swatch. And um, I made the mitered squares, like the whole thing is mitered squares. But by the time I um, got to put it together, I think I hadn't done a gauge swatch and it was going to be way too small. So it sat in a bag for a while, but then I got excited and learned, I taught myself, or maybe I paid attention to other people. It has, um, so this is the sleeve, the cuff and the underside, so there's a gusset to make it bigger, ugh, bigger, which flows into the gusset down the side of the body between the mitered squares, see that? So I like framed everything in black so that it would get bigger. Um, and it's all done and I put a collar on that turns down. Very proud of myself. Cause I it was probably increasing involved or something. So, oh, you can't even see it. And then I have really cool hair, really cool buttons in that bag that I, okay. And all the ends are woven in and I haven't tried it on in a thousand years because I'm really afraid that it's not going to fit. And then I lost a lot of weight and now I've been eating cookies. So I still don't know if it's going to fit, Ugh. but I have these, I have buttons. And my vision, and I have a little bit more of the black um, koi goo, and my vision is that I'll make little um, loops for the buttons. Oh, buttons on each side. So a loop from button to button. So I know what I want to do. This has been in this bag for many, many, many years. Buttons and button loops. That's what that one needs. Okay. This one I started, I don't know, pre-COVID, but not by much. It's from this book, Oop. Um, Marlisle, which now I want to knit like at least two more things from there. And it's this one. You may have seen this one before if you've been paying attention. And it is done. It's a sweater. Congratulations, it's a sweater. And I tried it on and it fit beautifully. Oh, look, color coordinated again. Fits beautifully. Did I do a swatch? No, I didn't do a swatch. It fits beautifully. Um, so there's ends to weave in, but there's also a steak to cut. And then I just have to, um, yeah, cut the steak and put on the borders, which are green. They're just garter stitch. So I just have to do that. And um, and then I was introduced to a, an Etsy shop that has beautiful ribbons. Oops. And so I'm going to, after I cut, so what the pattern has you do is cut the steak and then undo all these stitches on either side and then weave them all in. No, not going to do it that way. So, hi, cat. So what I do, whoops, where'd I go? So what I do want to do, though, is, um, sorry, cut them somehow and, sorry, <laughs> yum. And then um, sew this on top to make it pretty. And then I probably need buttons also, by the way. <gasps> I don't have buttons. Do I have buttons? No, I get to go button shopping. So this is, I could be wearing this. Um, and I thought this would be a fun thing to do on, you know, Facebook Live is the cutting and the picking up of the stitches. And then the next time you see me, I'd be wearing it maybe. Um, but yeah, I thought that would be a good thing to do on Facebook Live so you could watch me cut it open and see what I decide to do. Oh, I am literally not even halfway done. Literally. Okay, so this some of you, if Barb's still there or Lisa, this is the head of my sloth. And I have all the body parts. This is something. Oh, this is his little arm. Look with the little claws. Yeah. He's going to be really cute when he's done. So I have to finish the head and then sew all the body parts together. And, you know, weave in ends. And he has a poncho. I already made the poncho. 
So he's not done yet. Um, and then because, because I just adore sewing parts together, I made something else, which is buried right now. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get through all these things. Okay, so I made something else. What's in this bag? <gasps> oh, this is my um, Talamina shawl. When I think, Lisa, um, I was trying to get a bunch of people to use lace weight yarn, and so I um, taught a class at Woven Art in the before times when we could teach classes. There you go. This is um, called the Talamina shawl, and it's my friend Denise's pattern. And this is, I don't remember what lace weight yarn this is, but it was, it was lots of bright colors and I am technically done, but I have a lot of yarn left. So I was going to keep going and look, I'm color coordinated again. <laughs> um, cause I have a lot of yarn left and then there's a border. And so it's not done, but it was really fun when I was working on it. And some people, I, I taught the class twice. Yeah, Jean, there is a class on weaving and ends, but that doesn't mean that I have to like it or do it. Oops, I have a darning needle. Um, yeah, uh, so I, yeah, I'd like to sit and get into that one again, um, that Talamina shawl. And I have, <laughs> Kat, I teach the class um, on weaving and ends. So I, uh, Talamina shawl. I think that's a freestanding pattern. I can't remember, but I had tech edited some um, self-published books for my friend Denise. Um, Lost City Knits is her company. And um, and I bought yarn to make at least three of the items in the books. So that's there. So behind me, you can see my beautiful tree. And then behind that, there's some shelves. And they're mostly empty right now because that's where I keep all these bags. But then see that rat? There's a little umbrella uh, tree stand. Tree stand. Coat tree. That's what it's called that has more bags hanging on it. And those are the things I bought to make that I haven't started yet. So technically um, they don't need to be finished. So there you go. And weaving boot camp, yes. And sock um, darning boot camp as well. Um, mm -hmm. hmm. Okay, what's this one? Oh, this is the one, this is the one I started a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. I'm that far. It's a top down, uh, so I don't need to finish this yet. It's just in the in the project in the pile. But this is um, a top down uh, yoke sweater called Sorrel, S O R R E L, two R's and one L or vice versa, and it's beautiful. So I'm enjoying that, which is why um, <sighs> darn it, boot camp. Yeah, darn boot camp. Um, this is why I can't finish anything because I started that. So that's a UFO now. How are we doing for time? Okay. Oh, well, so this isn't technically a UFO. I was, um, <gasps> oh no. Looks like we had some moths. Yep, we did, there they are. Okay, well, so this has holes in it now. Um here see there's my thumb whoops so that part needs to be replaced but these are oh, crap okay these are let's see how many more have holes oh wow yeah we're gonna just put that right back in the bag we might have to just toss these okay well those were gonna be like a baby blanket someday but apparently wow yeah okay okay oh sorry <laughs> i threw it on the dog all right, fun. Hey, one UFO down. Here we go. This is another shawl. This was at the beginning of COVID times. Um, Casa Pinka, who's a designer, whose name I don't really know, but she has a cat whose name may or may not be Sharon. Um, or maybe the cat complains about Sharon. But she, um, that was the first time Casa Pinka came on my radar and she um, donated a shawl pattern knit along for shops so if you bought the yarn from the shop wow if you bought the yarn from the shop um then you could have the download for the um, sweater the shawl for free and it's called breathe and hope and i got um so i ordered it from open art and i got surprise it's blue this is the beginning and the right side and then 
it goes into another section with some like uh, corrugated rib kind of, except it's all knit stitches. So it's vertical stripes and then another interesting pattern and then more vertical stripes and then another. They're all kind of related. And I've seen some done. Um, mine's not done. Matter of fact, I'm even mid row. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I've seen some done and they're really pretty. I kind of lost the, the it needs to be blocked to be extra pretty. Um, and it's very obviously not blocked yet. So I kind of lost interest in that one. Ooh, okay. Guess what? Ends just need to be woven in on this guy. Plus it's too small, but whatever. Oops. I cannot get going on, um, whoo, which way the camera, the, the thingy goes. And there's this guy. So I wanted to finish this one. So I'm teaching a class in it again. This is what I put up in one of my pictures. It's the striped cardigan. So I've got a bunch of people right now making striped cardigans. It needs sleeves and it needs to have the buttons put on. Oop. Um, and it has the border with the buttonholes, but I decided um, later after the fact, hi Beth, she calls me Sarah Dactyl. There's a story there. Um, so this is the bottom, it's upside down, but I had decided I wanted, originally decided I wanted to have the border be the same width as the stripe, the black stripes. Isn't that pretty? I could be wearing that. Um, but when I got it done, I realized that my buttons were wider than that black stripe. So the front band needs to be wider. And now I feel weird about the front band being wider than the bottom. So what I'm gonna do is take off the front band um, take off the just the bottom, which is another example of cutting off part of your knitting. So that could be a um, good Facebook Live thing too. And then knit the new band on um, wider. Pick up a, knit, a new button band. Then I can put the freaking buttons on. And then guess what? New bands to weave in. And oh yeah, sleeves. So this one's, I'm actually teaching a class on this sweater so that I can maybe work on the sweater. I have the swatch too. So that's one. Here's another one from Sweater Design Land that just needs to have the ends woven in. Because there's a theme. Yep. Oh, and this is also another example of um, Sarah's curse, where if she starts working with the yarn, then the yarn company, either the yarn gets discontinued or the color gets discontinued or the um, company shuts down classically, I'm really sorry, or it burns down. Um, that was Punta Yarns. This was Cascade, it still is Cascade Longwood, and I'm not even done with the sweater, and they discontinued Cascade Longwood. So it's my curse. Um, yeah, so I probably need, Meg, who owns Woven Art, says I need to be paid to, um, that also needs buttons to not knit with people's yarn. Um, I'm going to put buttons. I made little openings on the top of the sleeve. I'm going to put little buttons there and also on the side vents. That's what they're called. There's that. Okay. I'm going to go, I have like, oh, I forgot to show you all the Afghans. I'm just going to go a little bit more because I think we have plenty to work with here. What's in here? <gasps> okay. Okay. <laughs> This is a little entrelac scarf that was gonna be my busy work, you know, my comfort knitting. And then I put it in a bag, isn't that pretty? So that's technically the um, sample, the, one of the swatches from the entrelac class. And then I just kept going and I wanted to have a scarf so I could tell my entrelac students, and if you just keep going, it looks like this, but that's what they do in class. So it does look like that. So that would be nice to finish, although obviously I have a long way to go. And I hear at the end that there will be ends to weave in. <sighs> oh, anybody want some sock yarn? Oh, hi, Meg. Yes, protection money for yarn companies. Yes, yeah, so that they don't burn down or whatever. So this is a pair of, um, somebody asked me once, um, do I ever do, because I teach a class, um, when I do cuff down classes, yeah, cuff down classes, I teach on double points just because that's the way I learned. And then when I teach toe up, I use magic loop just so you have something different to do and it's a good skill to learn. And someone in one of those classes asked me once, um, do you ever do two at a time? And I said, no, no, I don't. 
And I said, why? I said, I don't know. I just never wanted to. So then I decided that I should have a little bit more informed of an opinion. And I cast on two socks at the same time. And I got that far and I don't like it. And plus, I don't know, it's like munge colored yarn. So, um, yeah, so these have sat in a bag for a really long time and I really don't want to finish them. So probably I need to do something about that. Now I'm scared to look in all the bags because that one had the moth holes, massive moth holes. Well, um, have these been started? Yes. Yeah, so here's a toe up sock. Um, I don't know if we can call that started. It had it farther. Yeah, I had it farther and then um, I had an issue. So I think that one doesn't really count as one to get. We can just put it in that sock pile. We'll get to it later. I Yeah, but it's munch colored, cat. I don't like munch colored socks. She says I could put them on deep pans and do one at a time. Or I don't, Magic Loop is fine one at, a, one at a time, but I just don't even like the yarn. Oh, here we go. Okay. Back in Entrelock land. Oh, back in Entrelock land. So back when Nancy owned Woven Art, I had purchased some Diaketo yarn, which I don't even know if that exists anymore, but since I purchased it, all gone. And um, I made, I was trying to make, so I have some pillows, pillow covers that I've made um, out of Entrelac that I thought it'd be nice to um, sell as patterns, you know, because, okay, I'm just tired of looking at my hair, because, um, you know, I have this dream that I'm going to get rich off of patterns. This is nice. Um, but they were all yarn that had been discontinued or whatever. So... Yep, take the green. Yeah, that sock isn't really a project yet. I agree. I have enough projects. Okay. Um, so I bought yarn at the previous owner's woven art um, to make current versions. And then, of course, the yarn isn't available anymore. But here's a bolster. So either Bed Bath & Beyond or I think Bed Bath & Beyond sells bol round bolster pillow thingies. There's one downstairs somewhere. And um, then I did a square one. And I did a smaller rectangle one, all the sizes of pillow forms that I could find. So that one I did, um, that's a hand dyed from Nancy. So I was trying to do different um, combinations. And then guess what goes there? A zipper. And guess what I have? So like my reason for making them went away, um, but they'll still be nice <laughs> someday. But here's the way my brain works. Um, Ready? Hold on. Too many pieces. I bought new yarn to make a new version. <laughs> um, so sorry, Plymouth yarn, but this Gina is gonna be discontinued if I if I cast on. Wouldn't that be pretty though for that for those pillows? Um, so yeah, this isn't the project either, but finishing the previous one is. So there's that. Here's a whole pile. What's in here? Hmm. Okay, back in the day when I could teach at Interlochen, um, I taught my beginning knitting students to make a ribbed scarf and a hat. This is a Misty Alpaca Chunky that we used to carry at Wilmer. We don't anymore, of course. So this was the beginning knitting hat and um, scarf. And because we don't carry that yarn anymore, I wanted to make a new one. Oh, what the heck, this is something completely different. I'm gonna drop my needle. I have absolutely no idea what this is. So that apparently is not an unfinished project, except I think I wanted to knit it again in a current yarn. I have to give up my dream of publishing patterns is what I think. This appears to be hat with cables that I have no recollection of making. So there you go. All right. I have no idea. Uh, so yeah, it's an unfinished object. And I don't know why it's in this. These are going to go in a different pile because they're done. Yep. A uh, hat. Not done. Hat. 
Not done. Oh, okay. Here's the one when we were talking when I was talking about the sloth. Um, because I wanted to not sew things together, I found this little pattern. This is a cat. Doesn't look like a cat. And it doesn't get sewn together, but um, it wants the dog is digging in the carpet. It wants to be um, here. It's a cat. The pattern tells me to use batting and then make a little inside and then stuff that with polyfill, which I have polyfill thanks to, um, I think Sue, who comes to the Wednesday Knit Alongs at Woven Art, comes to their Zoom. Yep, she's digging, she's digging down. I don't know why. And, um, yeah, but there's batting involved. I'm not sure that's really going to happen. But there's my cat. Did I do that one? Oh, no, but that's not for <laughs> Okay, a couple more. We reached the, I'll just do the Afghans. There's like 30 more here, but. So hopefully the moths didn't get this one, but um, back in the day I was trying to do a garter stitch-ish Afghan and use up um, yarn from my stash. This is the stash blanket, if you've ever heard of my stash blanket. And I had a bunch of this um, red, it's, it's a bunch of different, whoops, uh, kinds of yarn they're all mountain nope yep mountain colors in the colorway ruby river but different yarn bases like those uh, alpaca gloves that i had earlier are one of them and then uh <laughs> hi jan and um there's a boucle one and a um just a plain wool one and a merino ribbon one and i don't know and so i of course had some black yarn and decided to just alternate and I was just swatching. I just was in the mood to do, I don't know what, whoops, here, this part. And then I thought, well, that's really pretty. I should do that with all the colors and make an, a rainbow blanket. But I, I didn't have all the colors. So for my stash blanket, I've been buying all the colors. And this is years and years old. But so I have the, um, the red, whoops, the red. And then there's a red violet. Nope. Yeah, red violet purple. Oops. Oh, okay. Surgery has been performed. <sighs> blue violet, blue, blue green. And I think I stopped there. I think I went from red to blue green because I didn't really want it to be a full rainbow. Plus it's bigger than my bed. Um, but what happened, and then I'm, you know, I have so much yarn now from that. But what happened was I ran out at the end of the purple, one of the yarns ran out and it was a fuzzy novelty thing and I couldn't find, the company is gone and I couldn't find the, my friend Beth who, who said hi a little bit ago, she had some more of that yarn, but it was a different dye lot, really different dye lot. And, you know, I was being super anal retentive that my um, purple had to, I don't know. Anyway, it's in a pile. I would love to have that blanket on my bed someday. And I, I want to say that the last time I pulled it out and looked, there was a little tiny moth hole. So I'll have to look at that one. Um, my son's going off to college, Afghan. He graduated two years ago. There's that one. And, oh, my temperature blanket. I know where that one is. Um, this is the first panel. I started it in August. And, whoops, that's the end. So August was hot. So there's whoop, the bottom, the cast on, and then I did, I'm doing the highs and lows for every day. Um, and then the silver there is the end of the month, the end of the calendar month. So um, it was getting into the colder temperatures. And then I started, um, I started the next panel. It's going to be three, pan three <laughs> panels. And I, um, started the next one and this is like I don't know December or something I'm, I'm behind so maybe this isn't a finishing this is a catching up because I would in my perfect world I you know do the previous days um, two garter stitch ridges before I go to sleep at night and then I have another one more um, 
Afghan, I was doing um, a learn to crochet skill builder, crochet skill builder Afghan designed by my friend Edie Ekman. And um, I'm using some Plymouth Encore in a bunch of colors and I was going gangbusters and then I got distracted. So I have, um, yeah, Lisa, I was going to bring in the, I, I redid the first, she's, she says um, she hasn't seen my temperature blanket in a while. Um, excuse me. Um, I originally had a brighter yellow for the, the yellow color and I hated it. I hated it. And then I realized there was a warmer yellow. And so I renit the first um, strip. So that's what put me behind. And there was some cut and pasting. I didn't re-knit all of them. But anyway, so I just finished that last week, re-knitting the first strip, so I'm behind. Um, Kat suggests I do two days at a time for the temperature blanket. Yeah, I could, And I, but I was re-catching up with the first three months, four months, four months. So um, yeah, I got farther behind. There's more here. I don't know what to do. I want to work on my... Um, I don't know what to do. And then I got yarn, um, the, the uh, knit along that I'm doing at Woven Art on Wednesdays, the Zoom lunchtime, whatever along, I'm declaring next month, March, to be, um, I'm calling it stripes, but really I want everybody to do brioche. I, I, I learned brioche from the Knit One Below book by Elise Duvcott, which is a different, it's the same fabric, I believe, but it's a different way of doing brioche. Um, Nancy Marchant and Stephen West use the, the one that has the yarn overs and the terms bark and burp, BRK and BRP. Um, and I haven't done that one a lot. So I thought I'd up my game on that. And uh, there's a poncho. We have a, um, anyway, this is not a woven art um, ad, but I bought the yarn to make the poncho uh, yesterday and brought it home. I have not started it yet, but the day is young. So um, I don't know. Tell me what to do. Margaret Smith, almost two months doing the, oop, finishing on whips. I would sort, sort that into piles. One to four hours to finish. Four to eight hours and greater than eight hours. Start with the first group. That's a good idea. Anna says, pick one thing to weave in the ends. That's a good idea. Yeah, I should, I, I should just make a big pile of weaving in ends. I did, I actually had a bag, a big tote bag by the front door with things to weave in ends. And I planned on taking it like, you know, to Big B or something one day. That was earlier this year. And I can't take it to Big B um, because COVID hit. Um, snowball it, what does that mean? Oh, does that mean wind it back into a ball? I think the socks, those munge colored socks will do that. <laughs> Stephanie, yes. See, I made everybody buy the poncho. March. We're starting in March. And I did actually start it already. I tried to use stash yarn. Um, I didn't try to use stash yarn. I did use stash yarn, but it wasn't as pretty as the one in the shop. So I went and bought yarn. Um, but yeah, so Stephanie, I made Stephanie buy the yarn for the poncho. Um, there's also a cowl that Meg designed that's in the round brioche. Same um, easy, same level of easy, I think. Um, and yeah, there's a bunch more people that I suggested by the yarn and the pattern. So yeah, um, and it's it was fun to start. Dave Ramsey term. I don't know who Dave Ramsey is. Starting with the smallest yarn debt and building on that momentum. Oh, you know, it's a profit first. Um, yeah, it's a financial thing. Okay. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to, I'm just blathering at this point. I literally have at least, I don't know, six? Here, I'll show you this one, and then that'll be it. This one's done, but I decided I wanted to make it longer. Um, this is a uh, this is a stash buster, always a bad thing, um, of, um, you know, I just pulled some charts out of, out of my uh, chart books. I can't, my brain's going to mush. And I had some leftover uh, jumper weight Shetland. Ooh, there. What? The color got brighter. And I had a bunch of like neutrally ones left over from a sweater I had done. I'm not a big fan of the neutral, but I'm very proud of myself for putting it in there. And I thought this looked kind of Miss ish where they had put, they would put the black and white checks in between blops of blops of color. Isn't that pretty, Stephanie? So this is color work. And 
I got so excited that each of those little, um, oops, it's upside down. Each of those little things have three colors in them, three shades of the color in them. So um, there's what, seven colors? One, two, three, four, five, six. There's six colors. That makes 18 colors plus the black, because there's always black, and plus there's like, I don't know, one, two, three, or four of those are different. And I had a lot of leftovers, but not that many. And now I have that many and more because I auditioned some colors. And, um, oh, and that's the other thing I wanted to show you. <laughs> Where did that one go? Oh, that's that one. Hold on, one more, one more. It got buried. Is that it? Yes. Ha. So, um, because I had all this leftover yarn, my friend Denise from Lost City Knits, I mentioned her with the Talamina shawl. She designed a um, vest. Oh, she designed a bunch, and I'm I'm their tech editor, so I get to see all these beautiful patterns. And I think this one was called the Berry Vest. No. No, there's another one. And I wanted to knit it. And I started, uh, I started with, I don't know if you can see in this bag. Whoa. So it's a rainbow of um, those yarns because, you know, so here's the thing. I'm buying all the yarn, the colors to make that. Oh, that's a bolt. Um, that, and it, this is why it's not done. It's a thing. But I, oh, that's actually not bad. But I wanted it to, I want to make it go around twice. So I was going to open it up and keep going because like it only uses like a yard or two of yarn each time. And I, so I bought all that yarn and I have all that yarn. So I was going to uh, make this beautiful sweater from Denise out of um, the leftovers. And I got that far. So that's not really ready to be finished, but I'm, that was, that's exciting to work on. Okay. So, um, well, tonight I think I'll work on my temperature blanket. I'm also trying to do a few rows a day at least of the blanket for my son. He's going off to college blanket. He graduated and moved away to Chicago and um, yeah, still have, I'm not even halfway done with his blanket. And um, what looks great as is, Jan, which project? Um, yeah, so I'm working on those two blankets kind of regularly, and I kind of want to keep working on the sweater that I just started that now I can't find. Oh, God, there's another one I didn't show you. Yeah, oh, here it is. Yep, the the pretty sorrel. Because I want to wear that to work. It's a little bit cold in the front room at the shop. See, I'm almost done. It's a sweater. <laughs> I'm not almost done. But I'm almost done with the great, the, the, the fun stuff. All right, so if you want to, you know, weigh in some more, or if you watch this later and want to weigh in, go ahead and tell me what to do. Um, yeah, and I will uh, report back in uh, maybe next week and tell you how many things I finished. Oh my gosh, all the things, right? Um, and I'll tell you how many more things I started, <laughs> which hopefully will only be one, the poncho. No, I don't know. It depends on when March starts. Oh, yeah, it does look great. I think it's, um, she she says the, the cowl is great as it is. It is great as it is. I just have so much of that yarn, and I really enjoy working on it. I also made a, oh, so I made a pillow um, cover out of it as well. That was the first thing I did, I think, and that's on my couch downstairs. And then I had so much fun, I was like, I should make a skirt with that, those, uh, those, charts and patterns and colors. And then I thought I could make a, a cardigan and I could, you know, knit a sweater for the cat and the dog and a blanket and we could all sit on the couch wearing our matching outfits and um, the blanket and the pillow and nobody would ever see us again. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, I'm gonna go eat something and then see what I wanna work on, but... Um, temperature blanket and um, call the cowl good. Okay, I'll call the cowl good. See, see, 54 minutes and you guys helped me make a freaking decision. Okay, I'll call the cowl good. So we're taking that out of the pile. Here it is, out of the pile. I'll wear it to work on Wednesday. And um, there you go. All set. I will report back, hopefully next Monday. Okay.
Bye, you guys. Thanks for, thanks for being here. It was fun.